Hey everybody, I can see the deer flies flying around me. So today I'm going to talk switchgrass, switchgrass in the north, and diversity within switchgrass. You can see behind me, this is a large swath of switchgrass, and I want to show you, I think this is five-year-old Shawnee, five, six-year-old Shawnee, but I want to show you what I'm doing with this area and how the wildlife are responding. All right, so you can see there is ample switchgrass in here, all the grass you see is switch but there are also ample broadleafs we got a lot of woody stuff popping in here this, um, there's another woody plant so with this particular area I initially planted it thicker it was about eight pounds per acre because I want to screen off the really good bedding that's down there but as I've left it I've decided that I'm gonna not burn this area because I love all the different broadleafs and woody species that are starting to pop out here. And I've come to notice, obviously the more diversity seems to always win with, with habitat conversion. And the more diversity I'm getting in here, the more wildlife that are using it. Now the kicker is up in the north here, a lot of these broadleaf plants will settle and push down so we need the switchgrass to be thick enough to still provide that viable cover for wildlife once the frost hits and the snow starts flying but we don't want it to be too thick and rank that the deer and other wildlife can't use it because if it gets too thick underneath here then we can't have turkey poults running around we can't have pheasants running and all the deer just also won't use it. So I'm letting this area go dirty. One of the cool things, as I'm letting the other native plants grow up, is that the wildlife are responding. Check this out. This was an old turkey nest from this past spring. Sorry, the shadows are kind of playing with me. You can see here. <clears throat> Turkeys love bedding in the switchgrass. So they found a nice spot here. You can even see the feathers. That's cool. I didn't see that. Found a nice spot here where they can hang out and make a nest. They have that nice cover. And then as these broadleafs come in, there's actually space underneath here for the poults to run. So I'm not burning this because I don't want to girdle and kill these trees. And switchgrass loves fire, so if I burn this, that switchgrass is going to be vibrant and thick that next year. But even though this, if it was a true screen, I'd want to burn it because I want to keep that good screen. But it's deep enough where even if this starts to get dirty, it's still going to screen off my good bedding down there. But this top can start to hold some wildlife. So I'm going to let the woody stuff come in. I'm going to let the broadleafs come in. And the switchgrass will still be growing in here, but I'm going to start to get that diversity component that I'm looking for right here so that it holds more wildlife. Other fun finds is that I'm starting to find a few more deer beds. Like I've said this before in the past, when you have switchgrass, you need thicker spots. It can't just be a sprig of switchgrass, you know, every five, six feet up here in the north because that is what's going to hold up. But you can see the deer don't bed actually in the switch. They bed in these spots where the switchgrass isn't growing. And I call those, like Jeff Sturgis actually used to talk about this a lot, those diversity pockets, but that's where the deer are bedding. Now if I got spots that are way too thick and rank and they're pure switchgrass and there's not little spots like this, the deer are not going to bed in it. But where these openings are in the switchgrass, that's where the deer are wanting to bed. So you need spots where switchgrass isn't growing, but you also need the switchgrass to be thick enough that it will actually provide viable cover. Okay, here's, this is cool. Here's another big bed right here. You can see, I'm trying to get the shadow out of there. Again, a spot where the switchgrass isn't growing. So deer are creatures of edge, and that's what they're using for bedding. So here's something I tried in this. Tried throwing logs in to see if they would utilize the logs. I actually sprayed and killed this, and I haven't seen a good enough result to think that's going to be a 
good option for creating switchgrass in the bedding in the future. But it was worth a shot. I always like experimenting. So yes, with switchgrass, we want the switch to be thick enough that it's going to provide cover well into the fall. But we also need diversity within that switch. So what's the balancing act for that as far as how heavy to plant? I'm still floating around that six to eight-ish pounds per acre, and it really depends on how good of a take you get. If you get a really good take of switchgrass, those first few years is normally when the switchgrass is the most vibrant. Actually, about year two or two to three is when the switchgrass is, looks really, really good. And then at the four to five year mark, if you want to keep it going well, that's when you need to burn it. But yeah, if you uh, if you decide not to manage it with fire, it'll start to get other plants creeping in and encroaching. And that's kind of what I'm going for in an area like this. I mean, you can see I got some balsam poplar, poplar popping out here. And they're all over out there. I can't really see my, it's pretty bright today. But I got balsam poplar and a variety of other plants. So even if it comes in too thick those first few years, if you just let it go, Nature's going to do its thing, and you will start to get some diversity. Obviously, if you get non-natives popping in your switchgrass, you want to manage it. But I'm letting this go because at the end of the day, like I've talked about, woody browse is king up here in the north. I like having herbaceous growth for the summer months for fawning and brood rearing cover. And I do like the switchgrass for bedding structure. But if you get a really thick rank stand, it's not going to hold wildlife. Pretty cool. There's even smokes popping out here. Oh, right there. Look at that. Awesome. You can see the switchgrass looks a little better in the bottom here. We've uh, we've been really really dry. We're in a drought right now, so we have good color here. The stuff I just showed before this definitely did not have great color so it's been dry switchgrass is is very drought tolerant but it's not going to grow as tall on those years where it's super dry i just got to show one more nice deer bed here and look at that right on the edge of the switch that is where they bed in switchgrass they do not bed in the middle of it pretty cool actually a really nice overlook here at the top of the hill see why the deer would want to bed here so at the end of the day you need diversity within your switchgrass the switchgrass is the bedding structure out here I mean the woody stuff hasn't got to that point yet the herbaceous growth is going to crumble as soon as the frost hits it so the switchgrass is that bedding structure and it is that structure for wildlife like where the turkey nest was or where some of these beds are because they're bedding up next to the structure but you can't go with pure switchgrass if you're going for bedding. You need to have those pockets or those areas where you have that other early successional growth coming. That is the only way you're going to get deer and other wildlife to use. Utilize the switchgrass. If it is pure switchgrass, which I've done, it ends up being a wildlife desert. I mean, they just will not utilize it. So as you're adding switchgrass you know i got this beautiful area here it's just an old pasture conversion but as you're adding switchgrass it is great structure but make sure that you are allowing other plants other native plants to thrive in these areas if you want to actually see wildlife utilize it so great tool for the habitat manager just don't fall for the I guess the idea that pure switchgrass is good wildlife habitat. We need other stuff growing in these areas as well. All right, y'all take care. God bless.